economy is bad, so we don't really know what to do. So how can we help them if no one's helping us? In Trenton, I didn't really think about hunger. But once I started to understand why, I started to care more. From the Finding Solutions to Hunger Guide, I just sort of went through and took what I felt I could use in my classroom to give the students knowledge about hunger and to teach them technology. I designed a project plan for middle school using Finding Solutions to Hunger. One class kept a food diary and then used choosemyplate.gov to look up the calories and then took that information and put it into Excel and created their own My Plates. That was one thing. We had students take pictures of their lunch. That was one of my favorites. And we made um, a PowerPoint and it turned it into a, a video. I had some age groups um, learning the distance that their food traveled. I have a cousin who has an 18-wheeler and he let us um, Skype with him. Um, he was in North Carolina unloading 700 frozen chickens into a, a warehouse. You know, here's a guy that can see them and they can see him and they can ask him questions directly and I think it just gives everything um, a quality that's real time. For example, you know, Skyping with the girls in Chestnut Hill. What's a Y poster? Um, yeah. Well, it's a poster. It expresses why is there hunger. So we did a Skype um, with the school in Trenton. I was only there for one of them, but I remember we were talking about how we can do stuff digitally. Like they were in the computer lab and they were talking about how we can spread the message. Did you know almost every night a child goes to bed starving? And they, they made like videos that were like animated. They were really good because the girls were like fifth, sixth graders, right? And we kind of talked about what we were doing. They thought that's really cool, so um, we're kind of gonna help them get a start on like doing projects. Yes. Finding solutions to hunger grabbed my attention immediately. What it did was create in the, in the minds of the girls, an openness and a question, like where, where, where does hunger come from and how come people are hungry? You know, it's, it seems like such a basic, naive question, but that project opened that and once they were open to that, things like, oh, Miss Brownell, here's this, this video that I saw. Here we are meeting to work on one of the lessons from the guide and we watched the film about plastic, a continent of plastic twice the size of Texas that's also endangering fish and people can't fish and people aren't eating and birds are eating the plastic and they're not going to lay eggs. And so we moved in a more environmental direction in order to step up recycling, getting rid of plastic, trying to build a garden so that we could then turn around and grow things and give them away. There's a, a kind of a, uh, an inherent disease, probably not just in education, but in any places we call kind of either orism. You know, you can only do this or that. You can do it both. You can really be sure kids have strong skills. Their curricularly, the traditional curriculum is there and underpinning it. Can I ask you a question off the list? Can we ask questions? But you can also include a lot of problem solving, creative thinking, so that when they leave, they don't just have a knowledge base. They have a quest. What are some of the ideas about hunger that you really want the students in your school to know? So the students, all of the students, we had everybody in the school come to the assembly, kindergarten through eighth grade, and everybody did something. The art teacher completely outdid herself. The music teacher had students do hunger raps. The physical education teacher um, did an interpretive dance to Michael Jackson's The Man in the Mirror. In our hunger assembly, we used the way the world eats. And in the guidebook, the activity is actually having a meal. So 15% of the people had a color that had a paper bag that had a Rice Krispie Treat, a bottle of water, and candy. And 60% of the students had a paper bag that had a bottle of water and a Rice Krispie Treat. And 25% had a paper bag with a measly little bottle of water in it. And so they all opened it at one time and um, you know, we didn't know how it would be received, but it was, um, it was powerful. I can't hear your cries, but yet I feel your pain. 
it sounds so horrible, like thunder when it rains. So our students had the benefit of having hunger infused into the curriculum in each one of their special classes. There were residual effects for the second grade teachers all the way up for kindergarten, all the way up to eighth grade teachers because their students were excited about it. They got to talk about it. They got to see it in their writing um, in their classrooms outside of special. So it really became a school-wide um, project. That was my favorite part of the whole assembly is that we had that committee of seventh grade girls. They did a lot of work and all the while Skyping with the girls in Chestnut Hill letting them know what they were doing. It gave everybody a sense of ownership. It was our assembly.